Good evening class. Tonight we're actually going to go ahead and learn how to make a fan blade. This item right here. We're going to think about how we want to start the drawing. When we look at this drawing it's in inches. So we're going to go ahead and file new inches and we're going to pick ANSI as the uh, dimension style. Okay, we're going to hit OK. Goes on tight. It's a part file. This is going to be done in SolidWorks 2018. First thing we do is turn on our planes. That way we know where in space we are. I like to also turn on the origin to make everything visible. Planes and origin. It always helps. Next, we need to determine how we're going to start this part. Based on the fact that it is round and has symmetry in its shape, we're actually going to build the item I'm making in blue. That was the conversation we had prior to starting the taping of this lecture. There is going to be a center line right through here. Okay. And so what we're going to build is this shape right here that I just went and highlighted with this distance in mind. So when I switch over here, since that is the right side view, because remember we do have to respect, whether we like it or not, our orientation is in relationship to, I know this is a badly drawn cube, but this is the front, this is the right, as in right side, and this is the top. Okay? Always respect the cube, the isometric cube. It is literally the cube you see here. This cube. Okay? If you draw your model with respect to this, you actually will have a much easier time creating a detailed drawing. I am trying to give you this information up front instead of watching you struggle on the, on the other end. I don't want you to struggle. Okay? So I'm telling you up front always build with the cube in mind. Everything in SolidWorks and Inventor, every CAD package I know of operates with the same basic principle. Okay? So please respect that cube. Ignore the names that you see. Just remember when you go to isometric, that isometric that you see, that's the orientation you're after. In this case, this shape is in which plane based on the names that the planes are given. What? Huh? Right plane. So that's the plane we're going to build in. First thing you want to do is create a center line for yourself because that's going to literally center everything. Doesn't matter if you go in front or in back. I'll go in front just because I want my part to go forward. Okay? <coughs> Next, I'm going to go ahead and draw this basic shape. I can start with a rectangle if I want. Some people do that. And people ask me, what's the best way to begin? Realistically, there, there isn't one. I always like to make sure that my back of my part is up against the plane. So you'll notice that I did lock it to that plane. See how it does that? The way that happens, again, I go into rectangle, and I go and I touch the plane and it locks it to that side. I touch the plane. See that? My mouse moves and I touch that plane. That will lock it to that. If I go past the object, it's no longer locked to that plane. So I like to touch it and then boom, there it is. Next, I'm going to drop in some basic dimensions. The height of this thing, if I look at my drawing here, this is one of the things I was talking with my morning students about was um, how to uh, make sure you don't miss any dimensions, right? That can be tough sometimes. Well, if you have the drawing in front of you as we do, what you do is you, you knock it off. When you find it, you knock it off. So there, half an inch. So this dimension is actually 0.5. Okay. The next dimension is this guy. It's actually 1.6. It's hard to read it, but that's 1.6. 
So now I go ahead and I dimension from left to right. This is going to be 1.6. These are the basic exterior dimensions of this element. You notice I went for the outside dimensions. I didn't go for the minor dimensions. The minor dimensions, you can actually make them a couple of different ways. <clears throat> you can use the chamfer tool. You can do that afterwards if you want. Or you can build it into the base shape. Now, I have always said, build a model and then whittle away at it a little at a time. So build a basic geometry, have that available to you, then go back and literally modify it. That is a machinist approach. Because when I'm a machinist, what am I doing? I'm pulling raw stock from inventory, which is a block of something. It might be a round ring. That's the correct size. And then I go in and, and chamfer it, right? When we think of it, okay? that's the way. So there are a couple of different ways to think of how to build it. In my case, I'm going to build a basic shape, and then I'm going to go back and whittle away at it. Now, people will say, I want to make it the other way. My answer to them is it's OK. It actually is not. You know, there, there, there's not a hard and fast rule there. You can go either way. You can build it, the entire geometry in here, or you can chamfer it later. So for now, let's go ahead and take this approach. We're going to go from here to this inside space. Now notice if I move my mouse, I think when we did Revolve, I think we had this conversation last class. My mouse is on this side of the center line. It's halfway. I get radius. If I pop my mouse over to the other side of the center line, I'll get diameter. That only happens because I have a center line. That only happens because I have a center line. That only happens because I have a center line. If I did not have that center line there, that would not happen. This business of radius versus diameter, I wouldn't even have this option had I not used the center line. Please remember that. 2.25 is that dimension. That's this dimension here. Yeah, is it visually difficult to notice that? I agree. Yes, it is. The only reason I know this diameter 2.25 is not pointing to this outer shape is because there's no dimension attached to that outer shape. The arrows you'll notice are here and interior to there. That's the only reason I say that's the dimension, two and a quarter. That's it. Then we go to Features, and we Revolve. It sees the object, I hit OK, voila. Next, you're talking about chamfering. Uh, there's a, like I said, there's a few ways to think through that one. So the question is, let's look at it. It looks like the bottom chamfer, i got to clean this drawing up. I can't see anything anymore. Sorry, guys. You might see it on your drawing, but I can't see it anymore. i got to clean it up a bit. All right, there we go. Uh, this looks like a one eighth inch chamfer, uh, but I'm not given the vertical. I have this 1.6 and I have 1.35. So I got to do a little math. What's 1.6 minus 1.35? Quarter inch, right? 0.25. Is it a quarter inch? Okay. So 0.25 plus 0.35 will get you 0.6. Well, it's a quarter inch. That's the dimension. That's the leftover dimension. Whoops, let me change. That's the leftover dimension here and the leftover dimension here. Together. Together. So you have to divide that number by 2 to get the actual dimension. So it's an eighth by an eighth. So it's a 45 degree cut for the outer chamfer. So if I go to chamfer, not Fillet, as in fillet mignon, just joking, but chamfer. <coughs> chamfer can be done multiple ways. I don't think we've done chamfer in here before, so this is my opportunity to show it to you. You have two methods of chamfer. You can do the angle and the distance, or you can do distance, distance. Which one do we know? Technically, we know distance, distance. We know that it's, since it's an eighth by an eighth, mathematically, we know that means 45 degrees. We know that. But instead of giving the 45 degree bit of information, we're going to give it 
based on the, how the information is presented to us in the drawing. Are they presenting us the information in the form of an angle or in the form of dimensions? Dimensions. So therefore, we provide the information in the form of dimensions. Very important because a tolerance attached to an angle is not the same as a tolerance attached to a dimension, a linear dimension, to be more specific. Both of them are technically dimensions, so I should correct myself there. It's 45 degrees as an angular dimension, might have a plus or minus of one degree, versus 0.125 that might have a tolerance of 0.0 something or another, and if the tolerance is in both directions, those those are exclusive. The 45 degrees ang angle is, is not, it actually gets changed if either of those two dimensions change, correct? The other two, the linear dimensions. Because they're giving it to us without an angle dimension, they're telling us a linear, linear information, we're providing linear information. So point 0.125 is that <laughs> piece of linear information. <coughs> Sorry. Once you identify that angle, then you can go ahead and pick the edges that belong to having that done. Right now, this is designed to no preview. I can click on this and show full preview, and you'll see the angular cut. When you hit OK, voila, that's what you get. That's the outer chamfer. The inner chamfer is a little more interesting. That one has a 1.1 dimension. What's interesting is how the information is presented to you. You'll notice that they don't tell you the size of this. What they tell you instead is the leftover material. It's a little different than what you would expect, isn't it? So basically, an eighth plus an eighth is what? Quarter. So half an inch minus a quarter, we get quarter. So this is telling us this is a quarter. The remaining material is a quarter. So the dimension from here to here, done using mouse, mouse work versus an actual pen. So forgive that, my awful writing up here. That's 0.25. See that? That's 0.25. That is actually the dimension of this, the vertical height of this angular cut. Now, what is the horizontal distance? That's the other question. What's 1.1? <coughs> Let's flip the language there. What's 1.6 minus 1.1? 1 .1? 0.5, right? Yes, no, maybe, something like that, yeah. Yep, but use the word correct instead of right, because right means something different to us. So, something I gotta learn on. So 1.6 minus 1.1 is 0 0.5. 0 0.5 divided by 2 is 0.25. You got it. So a quarter of an inch in both directions. That, uh, that, that I do it wrong? Well, 1.6 minus 1.1 is 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is both sides together. No, for this dimension. Because 1.6 is, is this dimension, and 1.1 yeah, yeah. is this dimension. When I subtract the two, I get one. I get 0.5. Okay. Well, the 0.25 is the vertical. That's based on taking half an inch minus a minus an eighth minus an eighth. Because the one eighth is for the bottom piece, and the other eighth is for the space in between. It, it's kind of, it's weird how they dimensioned it. I agree. I find it irritating. Yes, I agree with you 100 percent. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, yeah. It would be nice. Nah, they didn't. Nah. Yeah, it would it would be nice if they dimensioned this thing differently. They chose not to, so you got to do a little math in your head to figure it out. So the the, in, <coughs> the interior angle is a quarter by a quarter. <coughs> So we go to chamfer and we pick that interior. Now we want it to be a quarter inch. Again, we pick dimensionally. So quarter symmetry. So inside and inside. And when we hit OK, voila, there is your shape. OK? That's it. Next, the much more 
fun part. That's the part I want to focus on. How the heck do we make this little monster right here? All right, that's really what we're focused on. There's a lot of information in here. We've got this. Let me erase some stuff. We're going to ignore all this now. We're focused up at the top now. <clears throat> we know this piece of information. We know how high it is off the surface. That's a really tough nut to figure out where that is. If I look at the end view of this thing, that means from up here somewhere where this radius, this diameter right here, where this arc here connects with this, that's where the point one, 0.71 is started from. That's the only assumption we can make. And you heard the way I said that, assumption? That is an assumption. And so we're going to expect our customer to review it, to make sure that that is the correct assumption. The rib is sticks out. We can call it a rib or a blade, however, whatever word you want to use. Um, over here, though, when you look over here, that's flat. See these? These are flat. These don't curve in or anything like that. They're just flat tops. So with that in mind, you have to think how that's going to get worked up. Again, this is the shape we're trying to build. If we build one, the rest are just a pattern. It's no big deal. You gotta just build one. So back over here, <coughs> the first thing you need to do is create a plane. I'm just giving you the answer instead of you struggling for it. You are going to add a plane. Have we done planes already in this class? Yes. So you understand those. Now this time, I am going to just be really, really lazy about it and say I want a plane that's referenced from this plane, but instead of trying to, whoops, sorry, ref, will you stop that? Okay. I had too many things and now it's starting to go off in its own little world. Let's try that one more time. Plane. Here's my plane. I can drag this, will you stop that? Drag, I'm trying to actually capture that. There we go. I can drag this plane. It won't let me drag it up. I can drag this, okay, I'll do it this way. I can drag this plane up, see that? Right, I, there's dimensions there. Or I can just pick the top. Now, I've been messing around with this so much. I can just say parallel. Because I intentionally stayed by dimension and, and was moving it up and down. When I hit this, I got a rebuild error. When I hit parallel, I had no problem. Do you see that? Because that's what I asked for. I, I touched the outer radius. Because I touched the outer radius, it wants to do tangent to that outer radius or outer diameter, if that's the way you want to think of it. See that? Because I touched this outer shape, if I touch this one instead, guess where it would be tangent to? That one. If I touch this one, guess what it would be tangent to? That one. If I touch this one, guess where it would be tangent to? That one. All right? It just, I pick the outer one. Now, some people ask me the question, well, all right, you threw that on there. Now, why don't you tack on past that the 0.71? I wish. The software doesn't work that way. It operates in a very step-by-step -step way. I can't say tangent and then say from tangent, then go another distance. It doesn't, it's not capable of doing that. I actually have to put in, <coughs> see how tangent is on right here? I have to put it, if you say flip, flip side, it'll drop to the bottom. See that? So let's say it was the bottom, I wanted a tangent to it, it'll do that. See that? Okay. I can't say, oh, and then tack on an additional tangent plus. I don't have that option in this software. So I have to say, okay. <coughs> so I have my one plane. Then I can turn around and add one more plane in reference to the one I just created. That actually is the correct height. And that one I will put an actual numeric value in of 0.71. So it does go all the way up to 0.71.
Now you're going to ask me why. Why? Why don't I just start my object on that plane? Remember when I told you about how when you extrude to hug? Remember that extrude? But you end up with that gap, and then you got to fix it. So you got to extrude to face. Remember that? We're going to use extrude to face the other way. We're going to build our shape out in space, and we're going to extrude down to face. And it's going to attach to the face of the object. That is the reason I'm going to start out in, as I'll say, la la land, out in space, instead of starting where my first plane is and extrude up 0.7, because then I got to turn around and fix the little sides. And I'm not going to go pull out the clock gun and fill it in. Does that make sense? I can't do the virtual clock gun. It's annoying. I don't want to do that. I want to build it so I, can, so I don't have to worry about it. Now, you see how we have so many planes? It's going to get confusing. This is an example when I start telling you, turn your planes off. Not your object, though. Sorry, I picked everything. Plane two is reference from plane one. That's all. So I just offset it from the first plane, that distance. I am going to turn off my planes from visibility. I'm going to hide them, so I'm going to use the little eye <coughs> and turn them off. Because this will become visually challenging if you have too many planes up. Notice what I did? I turned all the other planes off and left this one up. That's what I would recommend you do. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw a sketch in this plane. So I'm going to go normal to. Now I'm looking at this object dead on on top. Now, <coughs> we have an interesting object. Some of its dimensions are here. The rest of the dimensions of all things are here. See that? That's where the rest of the dimensions are. Tilted towards you so you can see them. Now, what I see, and you may not see this, so I'm going to point it out to you. This is a, looks like a little box, doesn't it? Like a little bit of a, creates a little bit of a, a crossing type rectangle, a corner of a piece. That's what you're going to use as your reference. Here, I know it's very difficult to tell. And, I, and we are guessing, I will be honest with you on that. My guess is that you have this curve and the dimensions are off at center. That's the only guess you can make. You can tell that this line is centered, but this line you can't quite tell. So you will have to, to make some assumptions. Again, how do we solve this? What do we do? You can kind of, it almost looks like it's not centered to the arc. You see that? But how do we, how do we cover our anatomy? What do we do? I'm sorry? The thickness of what? Oh, well, and actually after is the location of, the, of this. That is a good point. Thank you for pointing that out. You're correct. The, uh, <coughs> what I'm trying to point out is you can't quite tell when you look at this drawing that this pink line that my arrow is on, you can't, it doesn't look like it goes through the center of that arc. We have, we're going to assume that. And we're going to cover our anatomy by doing what? Having the customer look at it and approve it. Because that's, that's going to be identified in our detail drawing, right? Right? Our detail drawings will identify a close-up of that item dimension. The way to build this is you want to use center lines. Is it centered? Where do you think this is? There's another view that gives us that information. I'll use red. See this view over here? This view actually tells us where the blade is located. You'll notice that it says that it's 0 0.31 from where? Looks like from the center. 
And I said, looks like. That's a tough sell. Because it's actually not flush with this front face. It is a little bit off. Right here, 0.08. It's recessed 0.08 in. So it is a little off. It's not right on the edge, so it's very difficult to see that. We're going to, again, make assumptions that the customer will verify. So off the center, we're 0 0.31 away. So if I drew a hand sketch for myself on the side, I draw something like this. Now this 0 0.31 is not the same as 0 0.66, correct? So somewhere in here is a center line where this is 0.31, this dimension. That way your objects tip, because that's what we're pointing to. This back radius is there. The radius, this little circle, rep that awful thing that's supposed to look like a circle. It represents this back piece right here. <coughs> and this dot that I'm drawing, trying to draw, there it goes. That's a dot, guys, sorry. Is where this tip ends. So your arc for your rib, I, this is very exaggerated, it looks something like that. So you have that arc. Let's try to draw that line back in there. And it loops around and goes there. It's a blade. It's got a flat bottom. That's, that's this generic shape. This flat blade and it curves over. It's easier for you to hand draw it than it is for me to use my mouse to try to, to, try to draw this shape. It's very, very difficult to draw. Because that's what it is. That's what the customer gave us. It's not my call. So in here, I'm going to draw this shape away from everything. So you know what I'm drawing. There's my rectangle. I'm going to dimension this from up here to down here. I'm going to dimension it 1.08, which is this dimension here. <coughs> that dimension, 1.08. This dimension from here to here, I'm going to dimension that 0.66. I honestly don't know what the dimension is, but 0.66 is the number I have. Okay? Then I'm going to add another center line in the middle of all this. Not dead center. Not dead center. Somewhere off center. And I'm going to dimension this 0 0.31. Because that's what this, this represents. 0.31. The 0.31 reference, it's one thing I don't like about SolidWorks, it's how it, how it so quickly orbits. I'm going to drag this entire shape now in here. Now I'm going to lock it. See this? I'm going to try to position it right there. I'm going to actually add another center line to connect these two. I'm going to say you and you, I want to be collinear. That'll lock this part in so it, it only, it will only slide forward and backward but not left to right. Okay? And then as far as its front view, that's this dimension, the 0.08. I'm going to apply the dimension from here. Now the 0.08 is to this inside spot. It's not to the front face, so be very careful of that. That's 0.08. <laughs> it works less 
the start curving part, you're right. I don't have that in there. That's this 0.07 dimension. So I'm going to go ahead and draw another line touching this object, going to that object. I'm going to smart dimension this object to 0.07. I was close. And there you have it. What this represents is your framework for where your arc is going. You only build one. You see that? So does the arc look like it's centered on that top space? Is this fin? Is it centered up here? No, it's off center. Yes, it is. It's off center. You're correct. Yeah. It's not centered. I would have assumed it was centered, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would too. For whatever reason, it's not. Maybe it's where the circle ends in the back, this little radius of, of 0.03. So let's go ahead and draw that circle in there. <clears throat> Smart to mention it. It wants to do diameter, so that's 0.03 times 2. I know it's 0.06, but... I'm just showing that you could do that. All right? There's that <coughs> radius up there. Now we're going to throw in an arc. So we've got two types of, not two types, we have multiple types of arcs. I'm going to pick three point arc. One, two, three. So that first point, second point, third point. So first point is out there. Second point. I don't know where it goes. I'm going to leave it out there. You notice that? What did I do with it? Did I attach it to anything? Did I attach that second point to anything? Nope. I did that intentionally. So that I can pick this object, hold my control key down, pick the circle. Again, I held my control key down. So I can pick both objects at the same time. And now I can select tangent. Then I can trim this excess off. Pick trim to closest. So that way I can get that dead on position. Now the only thing I have to apply to this thing is a, a dimension. So what's the radius on this thing? 1.03, 1.03. That's its radius. Wow, it dips in pretty deep. Notice that? Because it's tangent, I don't care where it goes up here. Notice that? Now I'm going to do it one more time with the other one. Watch how I do this. I pick an end point. Again, it's, it's three point. I go out here. Notice how far away I went? I don't care where this arc goes. I'm being intentional about that. Because I want to go in now and pick my arc, hold my control key down, I got to zoom in, pick my circle. Now that the two objects are selected, then I pick tangent. That's how I get them to make sure they're perfect to each other. Then I can trim the excess. And then I can apply a dimension since we know that this dimension is the same as the other dimension. I can select that other dimension, it'll do that. They're not driven to each other, I will tell you that. In other software packages, I can drive them together. So I would get a function of x. In this product, it doesn't do that. I'd have to, to, to put a, a formula in intentionally to make that work. So in this case, there you go. There's your two dimensions. Here's the one. Now the one is, like I said, is independent of the other. So if I change that to 1.5, you see how the other one didn't change? Just because I picked the other one like this doesn't make the two driven together. Okay? In other software packages, it does presume that you want that type of marriage, and it actually will drive one dimension to the other. In this software package, that does not work. That function does not work. So my past inventor students, it doesn't work. My current inventor students, it doesn't work. All right? No, didn't. Because they didn't. You see how it's got two arrows here? 
it's pointing to both radiuses. If I go to the PowerPoint, that's what it's telling me. If I go find, I don't know where the fan blade is. Did you do a three-point arc? Yeah, I did it as a three-pointer. And the, the, the second point, you see, that radius is pointing to both arcs. I'm not making it up. That's how it is. Uh, I did three-point arc because I can be lazy, and it, it allows me that, that level of freedom. The, uh, if I take it out, let me go ahead and take it out real quick. <clears throat> if I do any of the other ones, it wants me to do something, make a tangent. Um, if I did tangent arc, I don't have anything to be tangent to down here. I only have something to be tangent to up here. So it gets a little frustrating. I, I like three-point arc because I have total control of my object. And the way that I did it, though, that the bigger What's more important is I pick out here. See how I'm, I just pick outside. I made sure the only point I really locked down to was this point. I didn't try to lock down to that circle. I, I'm approaching that circle by using uh, my constraints. I pick that object, hold my control key down, pick this object, and then I, I literally pick tangent to make it snap into position. That gives me a little more control over how of the outcome of that that marriage, okay? Because I got a tangent now. Now these two lines. There you go. There's your two radiuses. They are technically in different center points for obvious reasons. And then I can trim that last piece right here, which is this little inner piece, and that's it. Now I know I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. Everything says fully defined. So I'm ready to roll, correct? Maybe? I don't know. Ah, yes, yes. You caught the error. Good job. Thank you. See this spot right here? It's open. If I try to go ahead and extrude this right now, I will get what's called a very strange shape. <laughs> I'll get one of these and I'll show you just so you see it. If I say up to surface and I pick the surface and I hit OK, I'll be like, what the heck is that? That is what you get. It's called a thin profile. That is what you get when you don't have a closed shape. You don't want that. You delete that. But you don't want to delete your sketches. You just want to delete that uh, extrusion itself. When you go back in and <laughs> edit that sketch, now you can drop in that actual line that closes the shape. Now when you extrude, you're going to get what you want, which is just that shape. And you're going to go up to surface, and you're going to pick this surface. And it is going to do an absolutely gorgeous job, see that, of marrying to that surface. If I picked up to, like, um, if I picked a blind and I typed it, what was that original dimension? 0.71. See, if I did that, you see what would happen? I'd have gaps. See that? I don't want gaps. That's why, again, that is the reason why you build off the part, so that you can use this feature up the surface to your advantage. That way, in one extrusion, you get the job done. It doesn't require extra work. All right? You don't want the extra work. You hit OK, and voila, there is your whip or your um, fan blade, whatever you want to call it. They call it fins. There's your fin. And then the rest is circular pattern. Pick the object. You have to remember, remember, uh, SolidWorks is a little subtle on this subject. It doesn't prompt you. It doesn't show you anything. You have to read on the right side what you're doing. I'm sorry, on the left side, not right side, left side. So you have to go over here. I usually pick like the inner drum. And then equally spaced, how many? 
8. That's it. You don't have to do the math. See that? And then you hit OK. And you are done. That is the fan blade. Or fin blade, whatever you want to call it. I think, it, I think we called it a fan blade. Yeah, I call that a fan blade. And that's it. That's the object. That's the lecture for this part. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop the video. That's how you make the fan blade.